Hey Wood Turners, I'm Captain Eddie Castle and welcome to my shop. I'm getting ready to spin up a whole bunch of Freedom Pens today. Got a little time in my busy retirement schedule. And I found the box of blanks I glued up about a year ago. Must be 50, 60 pens in there. And decided I'm going to spin them up and I'm going to turn them out and I'm going to turn them all using carbide tools. I'll show you some of it a little bit at the end. But one of the things I got from the tips package of guys sending me in ideas is let's drop the nut. We're talking this little nut that you use on the end of your pen mandrel to tighten it up. Let's get rid of it. Oh, they do make parts, centers that do this, get rid of this. But do you have a revolving center for your chuck, for your lathe? Do you? Well, if you've got a revolving center, I'm going to show you how to make one. It's real simple, and all you got to do is watch. To build this rig, we take our revolving center. It comes with that center pin. We use the knockout rod, rod, we remove the pin. Put it on the side, do not lose the pin. Okay. Now, we put a soft touch, a soft touch is a piece of, this is just a piece of cherry that's been drilled with a 5 8 inch hole, 11 16 is preferred, and then tapped with a 3 quarter 10, you can see it on there, 3 quarter 10 high speed steel tap. This comes from the Ace Hardware store on a corner. We tap this out. So now we have a soft touch. That's what I call it. We put the, tip, the the revolving center in our headstock. We put a six penny nail in the hole. Then we use common electrical tape. That's going to keep the nail from spinning out. Don't use the knockout rod to do this. Then this piece is fixed and it will spin with the lathe to be machined. We'll do that right now. The mandrel, most mandrels are exactly a one quarter inch hole. So use your drill, your drill gauge, find one that fits really really close. That is a one quarter inch drill. Although this is all made with metric, it fits in a quarter inch very nicely. Then we put a quarter inch drill in our drill chuck. We have this spinning, it's all true, it's running up nice. And we slowly drill a hole in that cap. It helps a lot if that material, the wood you used, is a little denser than this cherry. I'm using parts I had available. So we drill all the way through. Now what we have now is a piece that our pen mandrel will slip right into very nicely. I'm going to face it off so that the bushing flattens up against it next. Lay speed is about 2000 RPMs just because I, I don't want it to crack this off. I'm going to take some real easy slicing cuts. Remember, like I said a moment ago, if this was denser material, it would work nicer. In fact, I have to go looking around and find me some Corian. I'm pretty doggone sure this would be awesome out of a chunk of Corian. Now, because it was a piece of head laying around, now we have it. We might be done. I'll show you. You ready to see what works here? Okay. We've got our, ma our pen mandrel in. It's an adjustable. I've got a draw bar and a headstock pulling it tight. It's just how I commonly work. I have two bushings on this end to keep it away from this nut because when I'm turning I'm going quick. I have a single bushing in the middle for gauging 
two bushings of this in to keep it away from that. I'll bring up the tail stock just that easy. Can reach past you, lock it up, and put a turn on it. And that is now locked up and running true. I can put as much pressure as I would like to on that piece because simple physics says that I can compress what's in between those two this end and this end on that shaft and the shaft won't bow but if I put a lot of pressure on the end of the shaft and this end being fixed the shaft can bow big difference from the end of the shaft to pushing on the bushings so that's why we've done this this now gives us a rig no nut if I drop this in the shavings I don't have to worry about it well I will because it will contaminate my shavings and well alright but I don't need this anymore and it wasn't magnetic so when I pulled it off between pens I couldn't just stamp it onto a a, a rare earth magnet someplace and hope it stays around it would tend to get knocked into the bush to, to the shavings now we don't have that problem once again I remind you that wasn't my tip we had the pen challenge that went on during the month of June and guys sent me in tips and hints on pen turning and rigs and jigs and all that for doing pen turning well one of this little thing for dropping the nut came from one of those tips and I have a handful more of them some great ideas some on how to keep the glue from building up inside the tube and how to sharpen your pen mill I already got that one I got a pen mill or shave you but all these tips and hints help when you're doing pens so if you've got a tip or a hint and you can explain it send it to me in an email at eddiecastlonecox.net let me put that up for you right here there there you go eddiecastlonecox.net send it to that address and I'll be glad to share it along share it to guys I might tag it on might put it on a, the Ustream broadcast or whatever but I'll use it and I'll give you due credit if you put your name on it not your screen name come on give me a real name guys or turners Okay, now, that's just one tip. I've got a lot more coming your way. But all I want to do is tell you that i got to get back to making shavings because i got a whole box of pens to turn out. And standing here talking to you about dropping a nut ain't getting it done. See you later. Take care. Oh, don't go anywhere. I told you I was going to turn them all with carbide tools. i got to play a little music, put up a little business, because, you know, Big Eye Productions, EddieCastellan.com, is your source for carbide cutters. Should be your only source for carbide turning tools. Really. I mean, unless you got money to loan God, I should be the guy you, you get your carbide cutters from. But right after a little bit of music, I'll show you how I turn these using an 18 millimeter round cutter on a simple bar with a shop made handle. No magic, just good carbide high speed. Yeah, talent goes in there somewhere, but you know that. Take care.
guy asked me last week, he was in for a lesson, and he was really bad at sharpening. He said, how can I do pens without sharpening? And I said, well, there are those newfangled carbide tools out there. Why don't you go to my website and look up the 44 Special and get this 18 millimeter round cutter. See it? And this half inch bar. Turn yourself a handle and get to spinning some pens. I know a guy that's got gets about 300 pens out of the cutter. He can't use a skew. And I'm using my new no nut. Keep it tight, that's there it is. Will you keep a track of the time? I just added out on the back end of the little tip video because I'm always getting questions. What's a good cutter combination to do pens with? I can do them with the round and I can do them with the R2. I'm wasting my time with the square because the square cuts on the corners and you can't do that smooth planing cut very well. You can do it, but not very well. So, I'd say the 16 millimeter, the 18 millimeter, and the R2. That's a package. It really is.